Hello and welcome to this dot trust mass video on doing rotations. Now there's two different techniques when we're rotating 180 degrees around a point and when we're rotating 90 degrees around a point whether clockwise or anti-clockwise. So let's look at the technique for 180 degrees first. So we've got A here and we're rotating 180 degrees about the point 42. So let's put 42 which is here, that's our centre of rotation and we want to rotate 180 degrees. Now what you do is you look at each point one at a time. So this point here, for example, I've chosen this one first. Let's look at what we have to do to get to the center rotation. So we can see it's one, two, right. And all we need to do is just do the same again. So we go one, two, right, and it ends up here. What about this point up here? We can see to get to the center of rotation, it's one, two, three, right, and two down. Let's do the same again. One, two, three, right, two down, it ends up here. And then finally this point, that's one, two, three, right, one, two, three, right, ends up here. Join them together and we've got our shape labeling it B. So that's 180 degrees. And it should look right. So if I was to rotate A around this point, 180 degrees, can you see that indeed it's ended up at the right place? You can see you've got this kind of point of rotational symmetry here. What about the next one, 90 degrees? Now this gets a lot harder. So we want to rotate a 90 degrees clockwise about the point zero, zero. So let's put the point zero, zero. It might say the origin instead. Now, I think it's helpful to have a sense of where A would be if it's rotated 90 degrees around this point. So this finger here is the center of rotation and A is rotating 90 degrees clockwise around this point. So it's rotating 90 degrees clockwise like a clock and we can see it's gonna end up somewhere around here. So it's helpful to know roughly where your shape is gonna be based on what we're about to do next. Now we do a similar thing to before. So from this center of rotation, we're gonna actually draw a little line to one of the points. We'll do it for the other points in a second. And then basically we're gonna rotate that line 90 degrees. And the easiest way to do that is to think about the counts. And the counts basically swap when you have a 90 degree rotation. So any counts left right become up down and any counts which are up down become left right so they swap round. And the way we know whether it's left versus right is just by having a sense of where it is. So to get from here to here the one right the left right becomes up down so the one right becomes either one up or one down. But we said it was around here so it's going to be basically one down. And then the two up is gonna become two across, two left or right. And we know it's around here, so it's gonna be two right. So it's basically going to be here. So we can see one right became one down and the two up became two right. And if you draw a line like this, can you see that looks like a right angle? So it does look like that line has been rotated round 90 degrees. And now we've got the correct point. So let's do the same thing here. So you might be able to do this visually. If you draw a line from the center rotation to another point on the shape, if we rotate that line, you might just be able to see that it ends up down here because you might be able to see that right angle. But we'll do it by counts again. The two right and two up, they swap. So the two right becomes two down and the two up becomes two right. So it ends up here. And if we draw that, you can see again, look, that line does indeed rotate to give that line with a right angle there. So we've got this point, let's join those up. And then finally this point here, we've got one right and four up. So the one right becomes one down because we know it's in this region and the four up becomes four right rather than four left because it's completely the wrong direction. So it ends up here. And then if we draw that, we get uh, C. And again, if we, we could just sort of have a sense of whether it works. So if A rotates 90 degrees around like this, it ends up here. And you can see, if you try to memorize where this is, kind of its relative position to that point, you can see it is in the right place there. Um, if you have tracing paper, which I don't have on me, then this would be much easier because you can put the tracing paper over the grid, you can put the center rotation on, you can draw the original shape, and then putting your finger on the tracing paper, you can just rotate the tracing paper round to see where the shape ends up. And that is much easier. But here's a kind of a clever way you can do it without tracing paper if you don't have tracing paper available. Now for the last one, I've just redrawn the diagram to avoid any confusion with the other questions. We want to rotate the shape A 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the point minus one, zero. So remember, anti-clockwise means against the direction of a clock. And let's draw this point in, minus one, zero, that's the center. 
So if we just have a sense of where that shape is going to end up, if I put my finger here on the center of rotation and I rotate A 90 degrees anti-clockwise around my finger, we can see it's going to end up in this sort of quadrant, this region here. So we have a sense of where that point should be. Uh, so let's do it point by point again. If we start with this point, and the counts, remember, swap for 90 degrees, whether anti-clockwise or clockwise. So the two right and two up. Now the two right is going to become two up, and the two up is going to become two left. So it's two left, two up. It's going to be here. And again, if we draw a line like this to the center of rotation, we can see that looks right, and that does look like a right angle. So that seems to be in the right place. And we can see that's indeed anti-clockwise. Let's try the next point, this one here. If I draw a line to the center rotation, we can see that's free right and two up. So the free right becomes free up because left, right, and up, down, swap. And then the two up becomes two left. So two left, it ends up here. And then finally, we've got this point here. We've, we've got two right and four up. That becomes two up and four left. So one, two, three, four. So just to repeat that, the two right, remember left right becomes up down, so the two right becomes two up, and the four up becomes four either left or right, but right would be the wrong direction, so we can see it's four left, so four left, two up. And now we've got these three points here, we can just join them together, and we need to label it D, which I will do so. And there we go.